So you want to know about character to reign in life. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you four aspects of kingdom nature that allow believers to reign in life. Welcome, I'm Dr. Steve, and you get to spend some time with me here on this YouTube channel, learning how to have a vital connection with God and evident results because of this encounter-rich environment that you get with our Creator. So today we're talking about four aspects of kingdom nature that allow believers to reign in life. Let's look at number one, Christ-like attributes. There are nine attributes that kingdom citizens display. A. Rely fully on God. True humility is completely dependent on God as our Creator. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Being completely reliant on God is how we enter the kingdom, and it's also how we thrive in the kingdom on planet Earth. Blessed, Greek, makarios, from the root mak, indicating large or a long duration. The word is an adjective, suggesting happy, supremely blessed, a condition in which congratulations are in order. It is a grace word that expresses the special joys and satisfaction granted the person who experiences salvation. The poor in spirit are those who know and understand their absolute spiritual poverty apart from God. They lay aside self-reliance and reach out to God's grace. B. Follow Jesus even if persecuted. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The context of righteousness' sake in this verse is living to please Jesus Christ. C. Follow and express Jesus' teachings. Whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. D. Live authentic lives. Who we are when no one else is watching matters the most. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. The scribes and Pharisees were fake. They were frauds. They were putting on a false, fake image of righteousness, while inwardly they were arrogant, prideful, and far from God. E. Love to pray. Prayer in connection with our God is the source of authentic spirituality. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Simply saying the words, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, is not truly connecting with our Saviour, but opening our heart and communing with Him, praying with Him, sharing our heart in reality and, and transparency, is that connection spiritually in prayer that gives us that authentic relationship with our Creator. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This type of prayer, as it's prayed from the innermost being, allows us to stay close with our God. It helps us to stay free from all temptation and sin and shame and draws us into that empowering relationship with Jesus Christ. F. Focus on God as their source. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. G. Allow Christ's lordship to empower obedience. Our personal relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord lifts us up and empowers us to do the will of the Father. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. The foundation of godly character in a believer's life is the heart of God. And as we yield to God's nature and His heart, we open our lives up to be empowered and strengthened by His virtue. The Word of God, the Spirit of life, the presence of Jesus in our lives, walking and living in us and through us, empowers us to live holy lives and do the will of our Father. I've got more to share with you in a moment, but if you've enjoyed this video so far, hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so, and the notification bell so you can receive more of these videos in future, and share them with your friends so they can be encouraged as well. Number two, childlikeness. My wife just loves to watch Facebook videos of little kids doing funny things. And she shows everybody in the house when she comes up with a new video. And she gets so much joy and excitement out of watching these little kids' faces and the fun things that they do. How cute they are, how innocent they are. 
So why would this be? Well, this is the reflection of the heart of God. Beauty, innocence, sincerity. And we look at this and we understand that childlikeness is a wonderful virtue. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Childlikeness and childishness are two separate things. Childishness is selfishness and rebellion. Childlikeness is innocence and reliance. Childlikeness is a person who has a heart completely free of arrogance and rebellion. And they turn their hearts over and they're willing to open up and yield to God. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. A childlike person doesn't desire to dominate others for their own gain, but to serve others freely. His call to childlike humility and servant-like heart establishes the spirit and style by which the authority of the believer is to be exercised as an agent of God's kingdom power. True authority is not an exercise of dominating or pushing people down. It is the ability to dominate and overcome all of the selfish desires on the inside of us that want to control others. Childlike aspirations are sincere, innocent, selfless and pure. My wife and I have amazing pastors in Australia, Pastors Neil and Nancy Myers. They were the international presidents of Christian Outreach Center for many years, in which there were over a thousand churches planted all over the world. I saw Pastor Neil and Nancy lead this whole movement with integrity and childlike humility. I didn't ever see them push people down, control or manipulate. They would both lead with integrity and lift others up. On the video description, I have a free link for you. Kingdom Principles by Dr. Miles Munro. Preparing for Kingdom Experience and Expansion. Over 200 pages sharing nine concepts that'll help you live fruitful on planet Earth. So go and check that out today. Number three, forgiveness. Forgiveness. In the forefront, being ready to give forgiveness to others. Being prepared in advance to let go of all of the sin that others do towards us. Every kingdom person is advised to sustain a forgiving heart toward all other persons. Peter heard Jesus speaking one day on how to deal with a sinning brother or sister. And he came to Jesus with an approach that he thought was very generous. But Jesus corrected his mindset and gave him a more expansive understanding of what true humility, forgiveness and generosity really is. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. We see in this illustration where there was a man who owed a great debt and he was forgiven by a generous king. But when this man went to one of his servants who only owed him a small debt, he wouldn't forgive him. Now this man who was forgiven of a great debt was held in contempt because he wouldn't forgive such a small debt. And Jesus spoke to Peter and the other disciples and shared, this is what happens to someone who won't forgive. They will be put in prison and all their debt will be extracted from them. God wants to forgive you and I of all of our sins. But this is reliant on us forgiving others. In this story, we also see the key to living with a forgiving heart. It's having the compassion of Jesus. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? Being moved with compassion is the key. As we ask God to lead us into compassion, we can be free of all resentment that would hold us back from forgiving others. Resentment is a tool of the devil to come in around our hearts and lock us in unforgiveness, which stops us from receiving all the forgiveness that God has for us. Resentment will cause depression, 
physical sickness, spiritual dryness, and powerlessness. Resentment is corrosive to the human heart, and it will start to destroy and, and tear away all of the virtue of God on the inside of us. It'll cause us to become hard and bitter towards others. And that's what causes sickness and depression and negatives in the mind to rise up and overtake us. And this is why it's so important for us to have a heart of compassion, the ability to see others through the eyes of God's love. Can I pray this for you right now? Father, I pray for everybody watching this video, and myself included, that we would all have a heart of compassion. Your ability to see others the way you see them, through your eyes of love and mercy and grace. Stir our hearts to forgive in advance, to let people go of all of the sins that they do towards us, to free them from judgment so that we wouldn't ridicule or be angry with anyone, but we would have hearts of love, mercy and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Number four, Christ-like freedom and integrity. Jesus Christ lived a life of full integrity and freedom from sin. Now we may fail or we may mess up, but Jesus will lift us up and grow us up into this life of freedom and integrity as we follow him. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Holy Spirit draws us on and lifts us up in this experience of freedom and integrity. I know when I'm spending time in this prayer room and I connect with the presence of the Holy Spirit and I open the Word of God and He speaks into my heart. He grows me up in this integrity, in freedom. So I'm no longer given over to the weaknesses of my old nature. I come out of this prayer room. I'm more happy. I'm more free. I'm easier to be around. There's greater creativity. I have a desire to work harder. There's so much more of Christ's integrity moving through me and freedom from the old lifestyle that I lived. Holiness of heart and life keep channels of communication open with God and ensure the Holy Spirit's free access to fulfilling the Father's will. So as the Holy Spirit comes around us, He helps us to live holy lives, which opens us up to a greater relationship, which allows the Holy Spirit to move more in our lives. So it's a, it's a spiraling process, moving upward and onward in God's holiness. And all we do to start this process is open up to Him in prayer and fellowship in the Word of God. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. We let our good deeds shine out as God comes around our lives more and more. So we can't do this alone. If we try to be good on our own, we've already understood that we can't do it. We fail every time. But when we allow God to empower us and move us on in the presence of His Holy Spirit, good works shine out of our lives automatically. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. The Corinthians were deceived into thinking that it didn't matter how their lifestyle was lived out on planet Earth. They could do what they wanted in their own eyes. But Paul came in and corrected them. He showed them the way they used to live outside of Christ and called them into a representation of Christ on this planet. You and I are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. And through his empowerment and a relationship with him, we shine the light of the kingdom for others to see. Spend time in God's presence. Expect the Spirit to transform you into the image of His glorious Son. So we live righteously. What does righteous mean? Right with God. And the only way we can do that is by being close to God, by allowing God to fill us and overflow us with His Word and His Spirit. These are the power twins that grow us up and turn us into Christ-like believers. As God flows in and through us in a powerful way, Jesus is revealed on planet Earth more and more. And that's why I want you to see this next video that's coming up. Holy Spirit Empowered Ministry. Five keys to powerful and effective ministry to others. So click on this video as it comes up next.